Hi everybody, my name is Travis Carey and I'm a lute maker in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this is the first in a series of videos uh, showing you how to do um, small maintenance and repairs to your lute. Um, this is the first video and it's going to be on tying a gut fret. Um, normally I do this kind of work in my workshop but I thought, since most people don't have a workshop, that I would set up at the dining room table and show you how you could do it yourself in your own house. So this is my setup. Um, I've got the loot. I've got a couple of blankets on the table um, for padding. And I've got a pillow that I've just sort of folded in half that supports the neck and the peg box. And the loot is just sitting here, it feels pretty secure, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, or slip, anything is going to slip off the table, so that's, that's good. Um, Alright, so uh, the method of tying a gut fret that I'm going to show you today is one that I've come up, come up with over the years of doing a lot of gut fret tying. It's pretty simple and it involves a minimum of tools, so that's a good thing. Um, actually all of what you need to change a gut fret is laid out right here on the table and uh, I'll go through it and what you need are uh, just a piece of card so that you can write down the location of the fret before you take it off so you know where to put it uh, when you're tying the fret and and putting it back into position um, you need a pair of fingernail clippers just for clipping the the gut uh, a caliper, a thickness caliper is a handy thing to have for measuring the diameter of the fret in case you don't know what that is. Um, you'll also need some way to burn the end of the gut and you can do this either using matches and if you use matches then you should have some sort of dish to put the spent matches in um, or you can use a gas lighter and that's my preferred method of, of doing gut frets. I'm just more comfortable with the gas lighter. I also have a cup of water, just cold water from the tap and I also have a bunch of fret gut. So, I'm all ready to go. Now, the first thing you need to do if you're replacing the fret on your lute is to uh, record the position of the fret because once you take it off, it's gone and you want to be able to put the fret back in the same place. So, um, sometimes um, your lute maker will give you a piece of card with, uh, with the frets marked on it. And if your lute maker hasn't done that, then you should do it yourself. Just plain old piece of card and set it down on the uh, fingerboard of the lute and just sort of nudge it up against the, uh, the edge of the nut there and bring along a pencil and just mark the position of the fret, each fret. There you go, that's all you need to do and that will um, give you the ability to put the fret back in the same place. Okay, so now we've got uh, all of these frets on here. I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you want to change one fret, then uh, that's pretty easy. We can do that. Um, that's what I'll demonstrate today. If you want to take off, or if you want to change all the frets, which is a good idea to do, say, once a year, because they do get worn out, then you might want to take all of them off at once. The next thing I've got to do is take off the old fret. <clears throat> and the way I do that is uh, I have to slack it off. Uh, which means I have to push it up toward the nut, up toward the peg box. And uh, I don't know if you can see here, but on this lute, there's a small wooden fret just behind the tied fret on the fourth course. It's called a tastino, and it's used for a mean tone temperament on, uh, on the lute. And uh, so if you have one of these on your lute, it's a good thing as far as the intonation of the lute is concerned, but it's just, it, it's another um, little problem that you have to work around when you're tying frets. It makes life just a little bit more difficult. So you can see when I'm pushing the fret backwards, I run into the tastino. So I have to be able to lift this fret over top of the tastino. And I'll show you how I do that. I'll just, uh, I'll get these strings out of the way. I'll get the fourth course uh, strings out of the way. So I'll just slack off the strings and just move them to the side and that'll make, make life a bit easier. Okay, so I can probably just lift this over the testino with my fingernail. There it went. Okay, so the fret is slacked off 
And to take it off, I just bring along my fingernail clippers and just clip the corner of it. And there it is. And so I can take the fret off. And then I want to find out what the diameter is. So I just use the, uh, the, the calipers here. And I can see that this fret is 0.95. Okay, so it's 0.95 millimeters. And that's what I've got here, 0.95 fret gut. Okay, so now we're, we're going on to tying the fret. And um, I guess the very first thing that I do with a fret, especially uh, a, a fret that's a bigger diameter up toward the, uh, the nut, um, is I dip the fret in water. That's what, this, uh, that's what this cup of water is for. Just dip it in just briefly, the first, say, three or four inches and pull it out and just sort of strip the water off it. And that's enough to make the fret um, just a little bit more flexible and a bit easier to work with. Then I just take my thumbnail and kind of, and my fingernail, and just sort of strip the end of the fret a little bit. And just get it a bit more flexible because that's the end of the fret gut that I'm going to be tying a knot in. Now I've got to get the fret uh, gut underneath the strings and I'm coming in from the treble side and uh, just slipping it under the strings and making sure that I actually do get it underneath all of the strings because if I don't if I go on top of the strings there will be a problem okay and there we are we've got uh, the fret underneath the strings now I'll take away the pillow and turn the lute over so it's facing down on the table and there's the end of the fret that I've just put through and I've stripped the end. And now I want to bring in my flame. I'm just going to burn the knot or burn the end of the gut. Make my little nobble. There it is. Now I need to uh, make an overhand knot. So I just make one loop and bring the end of the gut up through that loop, like that, and pass the long end of the uh, gut strand through it, like that. Tighten up the knot with your fingertips, Snug everything up. Pull that knot tight. Right, and I can actually start to, I want to hold the neck of the lute down so that it's really, it's held against the surface of the, uh, the work table here. And I can bring my hand around and uh, really sort of hold it, hold the, uh, the peg box and the neck of the lute down against the table. I've got my left thumb on the uh, corner of the, the neck here against the fret gut and I'm holding that fret gut against the neck. You're bracing your thumb back there you can pull this quite tight and then just clip the gut off about maybe a quarter inch or so away from the knot. You have to burn that a little bit. Bring the flame in, little by little. There, that's pretty close. Now both ends of the, of the fret gut are burnt right up to that knot. And I think it looks pretty tight. So now, I'll turn the lute over. And now I have to move that fret back into position. So I will move this fret a little bit on the, uh, the right hand side, the treble side. I'll move that down first and, and then on the other side and then this side, the other side. Sort of walking it toward. So there's the Tastino and I need to get the fret over top of it so I will use this piece of card and just slip it under this loose fret and pull it up. 
and use it as a sling to just lift it gently over top. Right, I'm pulling the fret into position, then I can just pull the card out of the way. And there it is. And I can check the position of the fret gut with, with my card. It looks pretty close. So there it is. The fret's in position. It's tight. It's tied nicely. And you're ready to go. That's it for, for tying a, a gut fret. So all of you folks out there with, uh, with your own lutes, don't go running off to your local luthier to get a gut fret tied. Do it yourself on your dining room table. showing you how to do um, small maintenance and repairs to your lute. Um, this is the first video and it's going to be on tying a gut fret. Um, normally I do this kind of work in my workshop, but I thought since most people don't have a workshop that I would set up at the dining room table and show you how you could do it yourself in your own house. So this is my setup. Location of the fret before you take it off so you know where to put it uh, when you're tying the fret and, and putting it back into position. Um, you need a pair of fingernail clippers just for clipping the, the gut. Uh, a caliper, a thickness caliper is a handy thing to have for measuring the diameter of the fret in case you don't know what that is. Um, you'll also need some way to burn the up. Um, I've got the lute. I've got a couple of blankets on the table um, for padding and I've got a pillow that I've just sort of folded in half that supports the neck and the peg box and the lute is just sitting here, it feels pretty secure, I don't think it's going to go anywhere or slip, anything is going to slip off the table, so that's, that's good. Um, Alright, so uh, the method of tying a gut fret that I'm going to show you today is one that I've come up come up with over the years of doing a lot of gut fret tying. It's pretty simple and it involves a minimum of tools, so that's a good thing. Um, actually, all of what you need to change a gut fret is laid out right here on the table. And uh, I'll go through it. And what you need are uh, just a piece of card so that you can write down the everybody, my name is Travis Carey and I'm a lute maker in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this is the first in a series of videos. 